Welcome to part two of debugging and code coverage. In part one, I stepped through program ENC debug and also went through the service program of ENC decrypt. And I stepped through a couple of the instructions to give you a quick flavor of how debugging works. And then after that was done, I did a brief demonstration of code coverage where I actually executed or I submitted a program to batch using code coverage and instead of going through the program step by step as a debugger normally would the program ran to completion and then when it was done another view popped up the code coverage results view popped up and it showed me all the lines and the percentages of each procedure that were executed in those programs so I can understand exactly how the program ran when it was being executed. When I did that though, I had to do it through RDI. I had to submit the request of code coverage through RDI. This next section of debugging and code coverage talks about a new feature in RDI called headless code coverage. So what you're looking at right here is this is the RDI developer hub. And if you don't know about this, you should Google this because there's a lot of valuable information on here that talks about all the different things, anything RDI. And you can see here, um, it goes down from the top. This is the latest in what's new in 9.6, but you can just keep going down in 9.512, you see right there. And it goes down and down. Here's, a, here's a, um, an article on refactoring. There's a video on refactoring, things like that. And there's also some good resources over here, some bookmarks that give you some other resources that you may want to look at for RDI. The one I want to look at right now, though, is this one right here, the, the latest one. What's new in RDI for 9.6? So I'll click on that. And where that should bring me is this screen right here. And this came out, as you can see, November 30th. It, it's actually a link to a presentation that Eric Simpson did. Eric Simpson works in the Toronto Labs with RDI. And this is a PDF download that you can click on that, download it, and you can see all the new enhancements that are in 9.6, including the new one called code coverage. So I'm going to now click on that and then open up the link so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Here is that PDF that I just downloaded. You can see what's new with RDI 9.6. This is page one. And let me just go to the, the, um, the agenda here so you can see what he's talking about here. Here's the agenda, as you can clearly see. And he talks about the new features. The one I'm going to bring out in more detail is this code coverage one right here. So let me go there, and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The way headless code coverage works now is it goes through via a command the new command called code cov and you'll see that in a minute but to get that command downloaded and operational on your machine first note that it's only available in 7.2 and 7.3 and it comes down via ptfs and this page right here shows you exactly what you need to do to download those ptfs once it's installed and it is an immediate apply once it's installed this will be the command you'll, you'll type in code cov and that's going to run out of QDev tools, as you can see right there. So that's to download it. Now I'm going to bring up a green screen, or a white screen, really, so you can see how this actually performs. The way headless code coverage works is after you type in the command, and you'll see how I do that, you'll type in a call command. But one of the things you must specify on the code cov, code cov command is a destination for the file that it's going to create. Again, this is headless, which means you don't need RDI to get this started. You will need RDI to view the results, but you don't need RDI to, to collect the information. So I created a directory in the IFS called CodeCov. You can see it right here. This is a filter to that folder right in the IFS. You can see right now it is indeed empty. So this is the folder, CodeCov right here and it's empty right now. Now I'll bring up the green screen so you can see that the command actually in, in progress. Here now is my interactive session. I'm going to type in the new command called CodeCov, and I'll prompt it, and I'm going to type in my call instruction. Now, of course, I, I already have my library set up correctly, 
So here's my call ENC debug. You can see that right there. And you must specify which module you actually want to cover. And in this particular case, I have two modules. I have the, the main module of ENC debug, which is the program. And then I have the service program. I want to cover both of those. So I'm going to specify both of those. So I'll put a plus sign over here and I'll say ENC debug, just like that. I'll say program, I'll hit enter to bring up the next parameter. And I'm going to type in ENC decrypt, as you can see. And I'm going to type in here, serve program. I'll hit enter. And now I'm paging down. And I will take the defaults over here of which code coverage level I want to see. And here's the output directory. This is where I'm going to specify the actual code cov directory if I can spell it correctly, code cov. And when I press enter, the program should execute and the information will be collected. Here's enter. It's running right now. The program is running. It's collecting all the data. And as you can see right here, here's my message at the bottom of the screen. It's saying that code coverage, uh, the result file was placed in that directory. And there's code cov, ENT debug, and there's the CC zip file. And that will contain the information that I can bring into RDI. And finally, here is RDI again. Here is the IFS. Here is my filter for the IFS. Here's code cov again. I've already refreshed this list. When I open this, sure enough now, there is that same exact file that was created by the code cov command. It's now resident in the IFS. The next step would be to import this into my code coverage view. And that will be in the next video, part three of this series. Thank you very much.